I got a lot to say about lightning. People think they understand lightning, but usually they don't, even if they think so. Every time it rains anywhere in the world, there are electrons that used to be up in the sky, in the clouds, that have arrived on Earth. And electricity doesn't like being imbalanced that way, all right? These are from ions that come out of the, 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 the rain-swelled skies. And so the electrons collect. Now, if you happen to be under a thunderstorm, there'd be a lot of those electrons collecting locally. The electrons want to get back to the cloud. Although it may be true that rain brings some charges down to ground, this certainly isn't the mechanism responsible for lightning. Most people have probably witnessed a lightning strike that occurred before any rainfall. More convincingly, if you consult any reputable scholarly source, such as Lightning Physics and Effects by Vladimir Rakoff and Martin Newman, you will find that all modern theories that attempt to explain the buildup of charges that produce lightning refer to charging mechanisms in the clouds that result in a buildup of charges in the clouds. And that just makes sense. Generally speaking, static charge builds up on things that are isolated, like clouds, and not things that are conducting and grounded, like the ground. Consider, for example, when power lines fall. Although a huge amount of charge may be injected into the ground, those charges don't stick around or accumulate. That's because the ground is grounded. Of course, it is possible to induce charges onto the ground of either polarity, but that's different. Those charges are the result of an external electric field. Because, you know, lightning strikes from the ground up, not from the clouds to the ground? If you consult any scholarly source and limiting the discussion to strikes between the clouds and the ground, you'll find that there are four different types of lightning. And within each one, there are at least three things to which we can assign a direction. The direction of the initial lightning leader, the direction of the flow of charge, and the direction of the return stroke. The most common type of cloud-to-ground lightning, accounting for 90% or more of strikes, is downward negative lightning. Here, the initial leader moves from the clouds down to the ground. The direction of the flow of charges or electrons is from the clouds down to the ground. And the direction of the return stroke is from the ground up to the clouds. The direction of the return stroke and the direction of the flow of charge are well explained in this animation on the National Weather Service website. It shows how, although the charges are moving downward, we observe a flash of light moving upward. We believe that Dr. Tyson is under the misconception that the direction of the return stroke is the same as the direction of the flow of charges. And so, lightning... There's a, what's called a leader stroke. There is generally a lack of consensus on lightning terminology, but what Dr. Tyson is describing is more commonly known as an initial lightning leader or a descending lightning leader. In the case of negative downward lightning, a negative descending stepped leader. The term stroke typically refers to the individual current pulses within a single lightning strike. So, for example, a single lightning strike can have multiple strokes that is exploring what path between the sky and the ground requires the least stress on the movement of these electrons. The path of least resistance between two points would simply be a straight line. Clearly, lightning does not take the path of least resistance. The reasons for the path of the descending lightning leader are more complex than the total resistance between the point of origin and the point of termination. It finds the path, it's called a leader stroke. And the moment that leader stroke completes, the electrons surge back to the cloud, and that is the lightning bolt that we all see that most people think comes from the cloud to the ground. But it's the electrons that had accumulated going from the ground back up to the clouds. What Dr. Tyson is describing does sound a little bit like a more rare form of lightning known as downward positive lightning, except that the principal cause is a buildup of positive charges in the clouds and not a buildup of negative charges on the ground. So if you're the tallest one in an area, you are susceptible, okay? 
Anytime lightning hits a baseball game, who does it hit? The tallest one. No, we can do better than that. The pitcher. The pitcher, up on a <laughs> the pitcher is right. just a little bit closer on the pitcher's mound. Whereas it is true that height is a critical factor in determining a structure's lightning attractive area or the probability of being struck, a pitcher's mound is only 10 inches high. Given that there are at least eight other players of varying height on the field at the same time, it seems unlikely that the pitcher would be singled out. The lightning attractive area of the eight other players combined would be much greater than that of the pitcher alone. And that leader stroke, the moment it comes out, you actually will feel the static electricity. So if, the, if you feel your hair rising up because you start accumulating these extra charges, if you start feeling the hair rise up on your skin, drop to the ground immediately. Because what's happening is the electrons are gathering and they're ready to make that jump, that, they're ready to jump. But if you drop low in that instant, You'll then you will confound this exercise. Given that the descending lightning leader moves at speeds in excess of 100,000 meters per second, or 220,000 miles per hour, there is no way anyone can dodge a lightning strike or react to an approaching lightning leader. Furthermore, lying on the ground could increase your risk of injury due to step potentials. The lightning rod is so brilliant. It, was, it may have been more brilliant than Ben knew. Because, watch what happens. So, you have the lightning rod, which is just a piece of metal sticking up, and it's the highest point of your structure, all right? So the electrons gather. If you make the lightning rod a point. This is important. Then, the electrons on going to that point, ready to go to the cloud, they'll leak off. And they'll just sort of drizzle off into the sky. All the electrons crowding there, they spill out. It's very crowded and, and you can spill electrons back and basically never have the lightning strike that would have otherwise taken place. It's just brilliant. What Dr. Tyson is describing, this leaking off of charge, is commonly known as pre-strike corona discharges. Lightning rods are generally exposed to two kinds of electric fields. One, which is due to the slow buildup of charges in the clouds and which takes many seconds or even minutes, and the other, which is due to an approaching descending lightning leader, which is very fast, a fraction of a second. Pre-strike corona, which can occur at the tip of a lightning rod, is due to the slow buildup of charges in the clouds prior to a lightning strike. Furthermore, contrary to Dr. Tyson's view, the general consensus is that such leaking of charge is detrimental to the proper operation of a lightning rod. Rather than prevent a lightning strike, this leaking off of charge reduces the effectiveness of a lightning rod the lightning rod is bypassed and the object to be protected is struck directly. This view was again expressed in a June 2024 paper in the Journal of Electrostatics titled Improving Lightning Protection with Corona Minimizing Air Terminals by F. D'Alessandro. D'Alessandro states, there is now a great deal of consensus among lightning researchers and practitioners that space charge accumulation reduces the efficiency of an air terminal. By inhibiting the initiation and development of an upward leader, a critical stage in the lightning attachment process. The sign of a good scientist is if you don't really know for sure, you don't say that you know for sure. That's good advice for us all.